Hello, good afternoon and welcome to Dominion Chapel Sunday School. Today we're going to be talking about Pentecost Sunday. I'll give you a brief outline as to what happened after Easter Sunday, also known as Resurrection Sunday. We have just celebrated Easter, which is one of the most important dates in the Christian calendar. And Pentecost Sunday was on the 23rd of May of this year. After Jesus resurrected from the dead, he showed himself to his disciples and told them about the kingdom of God. This he did for 40 days after he rose from the dead. When they were together, he told them to remain in Jerusalem, but to wait until they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. It was after Jesus, after Jesus said this that he left and he was taken up into heaven. It was 10 days later, as the disciples were praying, when suddenly there was a sound from heaven like a rushing violent wind and filled the room where the disciples were and there was what seemed to be like tongues of fire resting on each of them and they were filled with the holy spirit and began to speak with other tongues and languages pentecost is the 50th day after resurrection sunday or easter sunday the day of pentecost is seen as the birth of the church this story is found in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. I'll leave you with the memory verse, which is found in Acts chapter 2, verse 21, which states as follows, Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. I now hand you over for the opening prayer and to watch the story of the day of Pentecost. So I'd like you all to um, to memorize the memory verse which is acts chapter 1 um acts chapter 2 verse 21 which states everyone who calls on the name of the lord will be saved amen we thank you for another opportunity before you we pray as we begin this service you will both direct with us and make us doers and not hearers of, of your word right? in jesus name Was blind, but now I see. I once was lost, but now I'm here. So 
beautiful name it is One to four. One. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Two. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Three. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Four. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in their tongues as the Spirit enabled them. One day, as Jesus and his disciples were sharing a meal, Jesus told them to wait in Jerusalem because the Lord was going to give them an amazing gift the Holy Spirit. Jesus told the disciples that they would act as witnesses to the whole world about the great works he did while on earth. Then right before their eyes, Jesus rose up into the sky and was hidden from them in a cloud. Jesus ascended to heaven just as he had promised. As they stood there staring into the sky, two angels appeared. They asked the disciples, why are you looking at the sky? Jesus will return to the earth one day the same way he left. After witnessing Jesus ascend to his Father in heaven, the disciples began the day-long walk back to Jerusalem. They gathered together in the upstairs room of the place where they were staying. There, the disciples, the women, and Jesus' mother and brothers joined together in prayer on a regular basis. After Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension, his close followers devoted their lives to prayer. On what seemed like a normal day, 
The group of Jesus followers gathered as usual in the upper room to pray and fellowship, when a sound like a rush of mighty wind from heaven suddenly filled the entire house. As they tried to figure out what just happened, they looked at each other and saw what looked to be tongues of fire that settled on each person in the room. This was it. This was the gift Jesus promised would come, the Holy Spirit. When they opened their mouths to praise God for this incredible gift, they began to speak in different languages, languages they had never spoken before. This was the power of the Holy Spirit. Jerusalem was packed with people who had traveled from many foreign lands for the festival of Pentecost. These foreign pilgrims began to overhear the disciples speaking foreign languages. A crowd of stunned and confused people gathered outside of the house where the disciples were staying. When the disciples spoke, the people in the crowd heard them speaking in their own foreign languages. How is this possible? Some people were amazed, wondering what this could mean. But others mocked the disciples and said they were drunk. Peter came out of the house and addressed the crowd of people, explaining how they were able to speak all these languages. He told the crowd that everything that was happening at that moment had been promised long ago in Scripture. Peter explained that Jesus, the man they had put to death, was God's Son, and He had risen from the dead and ascended to heaven. Peter said, Let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard Peter's message, it pierced their hearts. Filled with sorrow, grief, and regret, they were desperate to know what they could do to make things right between themselves and God and the Messiah they did not recognize and had rejected. People in the crowd cried out to Peter and the other disciples, What must we do to be saved? Peter shared the simple gospel message with them. Turn from sin, turn to God, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Peter continued preaching to the crowd, telling them that the promise of forgiveness of sins through repentance and baptism was for them, their children, and everyone who would believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Peter urged the people to save themselves and turn away from the path of the evil Jewish leaders. About 3,000 people who heard Peter's message that day believed and were baptized. They devoted themselves to the disciples' teaching about all the great works Jesus had done and his call for us to love each other. This group of new believers met to learn, fellowship, and pray together, just as we do today. This was the birth of the Christian Church. And it shall come to pass that whoever called my name of the Lord shall be saved. Dear God, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to us. Thank you for starting the church. Thank you for loving us. We love you too. Amen.